Now, with many of us worrying about the uncertain times ahead, it can have a dramatic impact on your quality of sleep. We're joined now by sleep expert and co-founder of the Sleep School, Guy Meadows, with his guide to getting a good night's rest. Morning. Um, Morning. It's, uh, it's funny. I don't know whether, you, whether you've got any of those, um, uh, the apps, like the Headspace apps or something like that. All, they can almost read your mind just when you're thinking, oh, God, it pings through and says, you know, you can make it through the day, everything's fine. But what's the core of all of this is a good night's sleep, isn't it? And we can be, and we are right now, very anxious. Yeah, absolutely. And sleep does play a fundamental role in boosting our immunity, so it's one of the best things to be doing right now. So we should be stockpiling sleep. Absolutely, banking it every single night. And yeah. so um, there's a few things that you need to be aware of, really, and one of them is your coping mechanism, what you do when you're at home to get through this stress and anxiety. Absolutely. So one of the traps that we all fall into is when we feel a little bit anxious or if our mind begins to race, we might sort of slip for things towards, you know, maybe have an extra glass of wine, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. alcohol disturbs your sleep and means that you'll wake up feeling more unrefreshed. We might eat a few many, uh, too many treats, you know, chocolate, which might contain sugar and caffeine, and that can disturb our sleep. We might sort of binge on box sets as well, which means we cut our sleep short because we're staying up late. I mean, you've just ruled out three <laughs> of my favourite things. Sorry. <laughs> now what am I going to do? Now well, there's lots of stuff that we can do. Um, I mean, you know, if we come to sort of just the real basics, the first thing that people should do is just to make sure that they're keeping a really good regular sleep-wake cycle, going to bed and getting up at the same time, because that helps to strengthen the internal body clock and it encourages people to fall asleep quicker and to stay asleep. Right, OK. Um, so also, the other thing is, you know, you said that you need to darken things down. Are mm. we sleeping in more light? Are we a sort of electric light? What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we know is that the human... Uh, the human well, humans are incredibly sensitive to, to light, in yeah. particular blue light or sunlight. Right. Uh, that's what gives us the get-up-and-go during the day, and when it gets dark, that's what signals to the brain to release melatonin, the mm -hmm. sleep-promoting hormone, telling us to fall asleep. We live very lit up lives these days. So two hours before going to bed, you just want to be aware. You want to sort of switch on the side lamps rather than the over and turn off the overheads. Reduce down the brightness on your screens and perhaps switch on your blue light filters as well, which you can find on pretty much every device now. Right. And that okay. should just help to encourage the brain and the body that sleeps on its way. Right. How do okay. you wind down? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, you know, winding down, again, in that last sort of two hours, but definitely in the last 30 minutes, you want to be engaging in sort of non-stimulating activities, you know, switching off the telly, getting off the laptop, stopping working. You know, you could do, you know, reading uh, a nice book, you know, sort of uh, playing jigsaw puzzles. Perhaps it feels like sort of going back to old times, but you're wanting to do stuff which is going to signal to the brain that sleeps on its way. I mean, I quite often, like, the sort of 10 o'clock news before I go to bed, and right now, you sort of watch that and then you're like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to even stop my brain from going to all sorts of places? Exactly. And this is... You the, wanna, you st the thing is, you want to be informed. So you're in this battle, I think, is particularly at the moment. Absolutely. So, you know, be informed consume your sort of uh, your news in the day, but make sure that you ring fence that sort of two hour period before going to bed to make sure that you're doing calming activities, mm -hmm. you know, a warm bath, doing some stretching, a gratitude journal, some meditation, that kind of stuff. It's gonna prepare your brain and your body mentally and emotionally, physically for sleep. What about mindfulness? Yeah, so at the sleep school, we pioneer the use of acceptance and commitment therapy, which includes mindfulness. And this is, you know, if we look at the number one thing that's keeping people awake at the moment, it's their thoughts, it's the rumination. And actually, what acceptance does is we know that the more you try to suppress, get rid of, block out your thoughts, the bigger and stronger they're going to come back in. So actually, one thing you could do, you could give your thought shorthand names. So it could be the virus thought or the finance thought or the work thought, for example. And then you might say, I'm noticing my mind telling me the virus thought again. What it does is it creates a little bit of mental space between you and the thought, enabling you to uh, have a bit of choice over how you respond. You're responding rather than reacting. And that might mean that you can then go, OK, I'm going to stay in bed and rest. I'm going to notice the movement of my breath using sort of mindfulness-based techniques. 
and you're, you're sort of increasing what we call psychological flexibility, your ability to notice thoughts, let them go, and not get so caught up in them, because that's what keeps you awake. And what happens if you've been to sleep and then you wake up? What's some advice on getting back to sleep? Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, th the first thing to understand is that we do sleep in cycles, of which are about two hours long, which means it's perfectly normal to wake up. And especially at this time, when you've got something on your mind, you're more likely to. So if you find yourself awake, firstly, rest. Rest is, resting in bed, it's not as good as sleep, but it's a great second place. You get, you still recharge, you still consolidate memory. And that's also a time where you might notice the movement of your breath um, and uh, you know, notice those thoughts. If that thought, if I don't fall asleep soon or fall back to sleep, you know, tomorrow's gonna be a disaster. You notice it, let it pass, come back to your breath again. You, uh, you put together a little list of, uh, of things that you can do uh, to help yourself asleep at night. Stay awake during the day, um, stop drinking caffeine at midday, avoid alcohol, eat healthily, exercise, do good exercise, and avoid nicotine, because that's a stimulant. Yeah, absolutely, it's super simple stuff. I mean, one of the most powerful things, actually, just getting outside, if you can get natural light onto your eyes, yeah. that's gonna increase your sort of sleep drive and help to uh, promote better Thank sleep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.